Um, so we've got 10 minutes left, and I just want to leave you hopefully with uh, a little bit more information so you could push your coding forward with Go. And um, constants, pointers, just looking at that to see what kind of coding is. We're almost to like loops, switches, pretty close. So uh, this presentation, number 10, presentation 10, goes over variables and zero value and scope and again kind of reiterates capitalization and uh, also uh, something called the blank identifier. And so um, the variable declarations like, you know, we see at the top there var a string, you know, that, that, those kinds of declarations can occur anywhere in your code, so inside or outside of a function. But then you have a shorthand notation, which is the colon equals, and that can only occur inside of a function, the colon equals. So you can do shorthand notation. So I guess I'm just trying to push things a little bit too fast, and we should slow down a little bit and just step through these. But there's that quote that I mentioned earlier. So let's look at variables. And uh, here's one way you could declare a variable. And, and one thing that I think is good to point out is just the difference between declare, assign, and initialize. So when you declare a variable, um, you're saying, hey, this variable exists, and then you could assign a value to it. And, uh, and then if you do both, declare and assign, that's initialize, right? Just to sort of clarify those terms. And so you can see there I'm declaring a variable message, var message string, and then I'm assigning to message the value hello world, a string. And, uh, and then I'm printing it out. So we've got declare and, and assign. And, um, and then, you know, print line, the difference between print and print line is print line will put in a return after, um, you know, whatever it prints. So it puts in a new line. And then var message string. And we could also do this type of a, a declaration, uh, var abc, they're all ints. So we declared three variables there. And then we're assigning one to a. and assigning hello world to message. And uh, so there is a var message string equals hello world. That would be, I don't know, declaring and assigning, which is initializing all at once. And there's multiple uh, initialization right there. ABC is equal to one, two, three. Sounds like a Michael Jackson song. <laughs> Could you go back to the previous, previous slide? One more back. Um, question, what are B and C? That's a great question. Yeah, and that's a great answer. And the default is uh, zero value. So go, you uh, automatically puts everything to zero if you don't put any otherwise, which is different from uh, most other programming languages, which are unknown. If I remember from last semester, won't that not even let you run it? Because it's variables that aren't being used, or if it, it was used, oh, that's a, it, that's it was good in the memory. print line. So um, yeah, you do have to use all your variables, but right. it, it was zero value, so it would have just printed zero zero on the print line statement. Yeah. So if uh, if we declare to sign initialize a variable, and uh, we didn't use it, that would be an error. But right here we are using it. Right, we're ABC. Yeah. So C++ will just grab whatever is in memory at that spot where they grabbed it. It'll go we'll clear out memory to all zero. So yeah, so that's value, yeah called zero value. So for booleans, if you don't assign, you just declare. Uh, it's false. And for integers, it's zero. For floats, it's zero, zero. And for strings, empty string. And for pointers, functions, interfaces, slices, channels, and maps, it's nil. That's the zero value. So uh, let's see what's different here. You could also do multiple types on one line. So you, you know, here I was saying, hey, they're all ints, but there I dropped saying they're ints, and it'll just figure it out. And, uh, and here I could have multiple types on the same line, so B is false. You can only drop the type when you're initializing. If, you're, uh, just, if you uh, declare it and then assign it, you have to put the type in. Because it doesn't know the type yet. So if you're initializing, it's got 
Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Is that what you're putting into it yeah. there and you can figure it out. Yeah, so up here, I couldn't be a var message, right? That wouldn't make sense because yeah. it has nothing to figure it out with. I'd have to say var message equals hello world, and I could have dropped, you know, the string part, and then it figures it out. Um, you can only do this inside of font, the colon equals, right? And so that's just your variable. You don't even need the word var anymore, just colon equals hello world. And that's the shorthand. So here's a page that kind of demonstrates all that all at once. Different, you know, var a string, var b c string, var d string, just declare, no assign, and then line 11, let's assign to d, and then var e int, right? I could do it down that way there, down there too, and I could just do f is equal to 43, colon equal 43, I don't need anything else, right? And it'll do a string, it could do multiple, you can do multiple of different types on line 17 or 16 or whatever that is. Uh, you could do uh, double quotes for in, and you could do uh, back ticks. And those are both strings. Back ticks are double quotes, and back ticks will keep your white space. So if you do multiple lines and returns and things like that, back ticks keeps that. And so if I run all that, this is kind of what I get. And it's kind of interesting. M is uh, 109 is what came out. Where's LM? Why is M 109? If you look at like line, you know, where I declare M, JKLM, M is single quotes, and I get the, you know, ASCII. Uh, value for that. Yeah, value for that. Thank you. I was looking for the word to say that. ASCII value for that. So that's just a, a single character. It's called a rune. A rune. R U N E. And go lang. And uh, there's an interesting link here to lexical elements, the different lexical elements in the language. And I really like this page. Um, comments, tokens, semicolons, identifiers, keywords, operators, and delimiters, integrator, in, in, integer literals, floating point literals. Lexical, of or relating to words or vocabulary of a language, relating to or of the nature of lexicon, dictionary. So lexical elements, like uh, what would be a lexical element on this page? Right here, this code on the left. I don't know, is it? <laughs> I was thinking colon equals. Fine, colon equals. So uh, right there, operator. Let's look for var. Keywords Keyword right var. Yeah, so great. Good. So uh, scope in Go is uh, we have the entire universe, and then we have a package, and then we have a file, and then we have a function, and we have curly braces. So inside of a function, you can have more curly braces, and you could declare a variable inside that function. And it's only available inside those curly braces inside the function, but it won't be to other areas of the function, right? Um, if you declare a variable lowercase inside a function, then it's only available in that function. Uh, if you declare a variable at the top level outside of a function inside of a, a file, lowercase, it's only that file. Uppercase, it's that package. Right. The uppercase is available outside the package. Lower and outside the package, that's yeah. right. Lowercase is anywhere in the package. There's no, it doesn't have, Go doesn't have a concept of individual files. That's right. But it does have a concept of function only? Yes. Okay. So. Yeah, function only. So uh, this is package level scope right here. And let me make this a little bigger. More package level scope. So what do we have? We have model controller and main. And in model, we have sheriff, lowercase. And then in controller, we have a function, uppercase, sheriff. And that returns sheriff. So you wouldn't say get sheriff. It's just you know from Capital Sheriff that's uh, publicly available and it's getting Sheriff's name. 
And then in main, we import that, and we use characters.sheriff, call the function to get the name. And you can see it returns the name. So uh, sheriff is only on the top file there, only available in the package characters. But in the middle file, sheriff the function is available outside the scope. You know, so just thinking about scope there. And uh, I think we're out of time. We're not going to be able to get through all that. So we left off right here with uh, that, that page. We'll pick this up Tuesday. This uh, weekend, work through your assignments through, uh, what are we on, 10? So work through 9. So that's, I know it's quite a lot. If it's too much, just come back and complain to me. <laughs> but try to do it, you know. I mean, like, it's really about learning it. And I'm, I'm going to serve as, I don't know, trying to put together good resources and provide a clear pathway for us and give us good structure. But um, this is a new class for me to teach, so I don't know how hard I'm pushing. And, you know, these guys stay in communication with me, so if it's too much, then just come back and say it's too much. But I think this is all easily doable to get through. And I think you'll really enjoy Caleb's summer boot camp videos. Anybody got any questions? So you know what you're doing? Work through Pat presentation nine and your assignments this week, weekend. How many people, it's going well for you? Let me see your hands. Cool, you're enjoying it. How many people, eh, eh? All right, you come up and chat with me if you want, and we can maybe try to make it better. All right, so come up and see me.